Okay, this is an introduction to Homer's Odyssey, and we are going to focus on how to read the poem. I'm Dr. Moore, I teach great books at St. Thomas University, and I teach Homer just about every year. And when I'm reading or teaching the Odyssey, I find the trick is to pay attention to reoccurring images. So one of the things I would encourage you to do as you read the Odyssey is to attend to any recurring scenarios or episodes, characters, or images that show up again and again, over and over again throughout the poem. Some terms we might use to describe this technique are prefiguration and refiguration. We'll sometimes encounter an image in the Odyssey only to realize we've seen something like this before. Not exactly the same, but similar. We might say then that the image we are seeing has been prefigured by something that's come before. And then later in the poem, we might see another image or episode that refigures those previous examples. So one way to approach the Odyssey is to recognize that the poem is organized around these structural images, and it's these images that give the poem shape and meaning. What we'll see throughout the poem is that these images recur. They appear again and again, each time in slightly different forms. So be sure to take note when you see an image or scenario in the poem that's being repeated. Because if it is being repeated, especially if it's being repeated again and again, it's likely significant. And pay attention too to the similarities and differences between each iteration of this image or episode, scenario, problem, whatever. These recurrent images link together different moments in the poem, and they alert us to connections between different scenarios or situations or people. So let me give you a concrete example. In Homer's Odyssey, we see a lot of parties. So many parties. For example, in book three, we see Nestor graciously hosting Telemachus. And then in book four, we're witness to this very uncomfortable dinner party where Helen and Menelaus are bickering the whole time and Helen spikes the punch so that everyone forgets all of their troubles. When Odysseus finds himself in the Cyclops' cave, we might not immediately recognize that as a party, but Odysseus describes himself as a guest in that episode. And then we get this nightmare dinner party as the host starts devouring the other partygoers. This recurring image of the party, both good and bad parties, reminds us that hospitality is among the central concerns of Homer's Odyssey. These images remind us that the whole Trojan War began because of a criminal house guest, Paris, and they keep our attention fixed on Ithaca, where a whole other hospitality crisis is playing out as these suitors refuse to leave Penelope alone and they waste away Odysseus's house. This is how prefiguration and refiguration works, linking together these different episodes of the poem, drawing our attention to the connections between them, fixing our attention on recurrent or maybe even fundamental human problems. Now, if we think big picture for a moment, we can start to see what this, this poetic strategy of prefiguration and refiguration, what that strategy tells us about the Homeric account of human life. One possibility is that this strategy emphasizes the fated character of human life. So following this interpretation, events that happen earlier in the poem prefigure the inevitability of events that occur later in the poem. But my sense is there's more to it than that. Homer seems to use this strategy to suggest there is a pattern to human existence, that there's a natural order to human things. We might then view patterns in the poetry as reflecting patterns in human life. The recurring types, character types, or scenarios that we see suggest that there's a certain degree of predictability to human existence, that certain actions produce certain necessary consequences. And every time we see that action, we're going to see a similar consequence. Homer's poem suggests that people have character types or character traits, and the same traits can be the source of a person's success or their failure, their glory or their doom. And these traits run deep. I don't think we can ever overcome them. Maybe we can manage them. When we think of our own lives and the problems we run into, we might think that they have any number of sources, and, and we may be you know, uh, comforted by the fact that they come from outside us, right? Our circumstances, situation, all these things happen to me. The Homeric account may offer an alternative perspective. Homer seems to suggest if you have a particular character type, that may bring with it a certain set of characteristic problems. And so long as you have this character type, you're going to encounter the same kinds of problems over and over again. And this may ultimately be a more persuasive account of human life. When you think of people you know, or maybe even yourself, maybe this makes sense that certain people have character flaws and those character flaws manifest themselves over and over again in almost the same way. That certain people seem to find themselves in the same type of trouble over and over again. This might be the key problem with Odysseus. So as we read, we want to think about Odysseus. Does he have some character trait that maybe benefits him, but maybe also gets him into a lot of trouble? And we also want to think of ourselves as we're reading. Do we have character traits or character flaws that 
seem to cause us the same type of trouble over and over again in our lives. And if you want to think more about Homer's Odyssey and the questions the poem raises for us, for you, for me, you can check out these videos over here. Thanks very much. I'll talk to you soon.